first and foremost, can I get a quick prayer, please? Quickly. All right. Uh, bow your heads, please. Uh, Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you once again for bringing us together, um, helping us and allowing us to have the people in place that we may have this format to speak our hearts and minds in order to bring the city together and also for the bigger goal of representing and for showing that you are leading us in this, Father, and under your blessing, we thank you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus amen. Name. Amen. Thank you, guys. We're back for another week. It's Tuesday. So that means it is Excuse the Duval and Me here live at the Cookbook at 1827 North Pearl Street. So please be sure to join us and also follow us on all social media at Excuse the Duval and Me. And I will go ahead and introduce the panel and our special guest. I'm your host, Sage. We have Camo. We have Jay the Great. We have Cap. And our distinguished special guest back with us again, uh, our expert. friend, a friend of the podcast and talk show, Big Game James. Thank you again for being back. Oh, there most we go. Most deaf, most uh, deaf. You see it. <laughs> you see it. Uncomfortable. All right. That so we, we have a lot to talk about this week. A lot has transpired, but we're going to jump this thing off first and foremost with Shots Shade. And we're asking, as the owner of the Jaguars, since he recently remarked that Jacksonville um, and the NFL pro football team is not in demand because we don't sell out games. He's having an issue with selling out the eight home games and taking more games over to London and also uh, throwing a little shade towards the city itself because we're not – putting ourselves forth in regards to trying to revitalize downtown, but also just in the city in general. And what are your thoughts on that, guys? He was absolutely right. <laughs> I don't think it's shade at all. I think everything he said was valid. He was. He even brought up a uh, lot, Jay. Nobody, especially in the city, when you guys are losing, never sold out seats. It's, the fans, if y'all are not winning, it's never packed. Never. I don't know what that's about. You know what I'm saying? That's the only time where it's actually a real deal event in Jacksonville on a Sunday, you know, where everybody can come together and enjoy one thing at one time, you know. And it's kind of sad to see that the city doesn't get behind the, the team as much as they should, you know, because everybody will be sick if they go and move to, like, somewhere else. Ten buck two, but who knows. But, um, and, yeah, everything everything like that, when he said something about going across uh, overseas to London, I agree with that because London doesn't have a team. And when they do go to London, it is always a sold-out arena. And, it, you know, for whatever reason, them London folks love to see us play football. And that's crazy. But it should be like that over here. You know, we birthed it. But I agree with everything he had to say. Uh. I agree with uh, Khan. I'm always going to agree with Khan because I believe that he's probably the only uh, official here that's trying to spend money. Um, and they consistently blocked a lot of his moves. Um, so if you really want to do something, you really want to see it come out, it's investment. This man done put a lot of money in that stadium. Um he wants to put a lot more money downtown. He's trying to invest and bring a boost to the city. But, of course, you know, you have people that wants the city to, you know, rot. And like he said, you know, the city been on the 50-year plan for 50, over 50 years. So, I mean, I just don't think um, – I think that the city should get behind this man. Like, why not? What else is there to do? I mean, yeah, back in the day when we had, you know, when we first got our team, the landing was great. It was a great place to go after the games and before the games. You don't have that anymore. Um, the same excitement that came along with everything is just not there anymore because it's nothing really to be excited about in this city, you know, other than the Jaguars when they do play. But what else is there to be, you know, hyped about, you know, uh, we don't really hear anything, you know, so it's like, dang, you know, what? what is the city going to do when it goes back, goes back to leadership? So. I mean, yeah, it's 
it's all about business. Uh, I remember there's such a pride from everybody who's from Duval. Um, I remember going back to when I did grad night um, and grad bash in Orlando when you heard 305 and then Duval and then somebody fought. And it was a yeah. lot of pride. And then when I played at Florida State and went to college, all my Duval friends, I had a, um, a homegirl, Terrell, she would come over here every weekend because she had to get her hair done. It was just something about that. My boy Leon Washington always talked about Duval. All I heard was Duval, 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 Duval. And Duval had never been nothing but a stop for me when I was driving through, um, when, when I had to go to Coco or at, um, Brevard County to go see my family for Thanksgiving. We would drive through and we never hit the city. I had never been here until the 2004, I think it was 2004, no, 2005 um, Gator Bowl. And then what I realized was this might be one of the most boring places I've ever been in. <laughs> and um, there was a young lady that I was talking to, and she tried to take me around. And I'm like, yo, all I heard about is how boring Tallahassee is. But I know what to do in Tallahassee. I, I'm a South Side boy. I go everywhere I want to go. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a hood legend there. I said, like, here, it was nothing. I said, like, now, I heard about places I didn't want to get shot at. That's, that, but that was the pride. Now, fast forward. It's a little bit, it's a lot better. Like when I first went there, the town center was just a concept. There was like, um, I think P.F. Chang's and Cheesecake Factory was the only thing there. And then I was, what I see it become now. And there's been a lot of blocking. But what I see though the, is, is, a, is a tremendous opportunity that's been wasted by people like us, waiting for somebody to do something. Now it's great that you have a brown person in Shah Khan, but Shah Khan's in the tax bracket to where the only thing that matters is green. No matter where he goes, he's the biggest dick in the room. Yeah. Oh, oh man, sorry if there's kids. My fault. Bottom line is that's what that's the reality of the situation. But we are, with the learn the history of the city when downtown used to be essentially a black Wall Street, where we used to have that. And also when we're looking at the boycotts and all this other stuff that we're trying to do with the NFL, we miss an important economic opportunity. Because white people were trying to boycott as well, because they were mad that people were taking the knee. And we was mad over somebody bo over somebody who who did not lose his job over the boycott. He was boycotting while he had a job. He decided to make some things happen for him not to have his job. But we could have filled those seats. And you know what would have happened if we would have filled those seats? We would get catered to. Money talks. At a certain point, we got to start voting with our dollar and stop giving a damn about voting in that in that booth. That's important. But you but you realize the Chinese, the Arabs, the Indians, they don't ever see them in the voting places. But what you do see is them getting their own stuff happening for them because they vote with their dollar and the economic block. So if we want to see stuff happen, that's what we should be doing here. We should be supporting the Jags. It should look like Florida, Georgia, um, seven weekends out of the year. There's no reason that it can't do this. Jacksonville, um, the, the area and the surrounding counties have enough people here to where you should be able to have 80 to 1,000 people in a stadium. And if they don't go in the stadium, that's not a problem. Because I've learned that, to be honest with you, it's kind of boring when you go in the stadium. But, like you just brought up, Lot J, all these other things, you can have a $40, you can pay $40, or let's say, actually, let's, let's, let's get that. You get five families, five families pay $200, they chip in $100. You can have a, a really good experience. Which with families cooking, barbecuing, out, and you spend it hours uh, out your daytime. Not just for the Jags, that should be one of the landmarks, but all around the all around the, the area. The um, was it the Northwest Classic? That should be packed every year by people who are here or not here. Um, some of these high school games, some of these other things that are going on. Jacksonville is one of the few cities in America that has this weird thing, and this is why I talk about it on radio um, and media, and why I always joke with people saying. I say what I want to say because I'm not afraid, but a lot more black people can say what we want to say and have our voice in the media if black businesses were, were giving media members bread. Because right. now I know I can say what I want to say for my community because I know my pocketbook not going to be affected. Right. McDonald's write a big check. If McDonald's say they don't want me to save black power, then I got to figure out, do I want to feed my family or do I want to be <laughs> pro-black? That's a hell of a predicament. But if I got some black businesses that are coming in there matching that check, then I have all the power to be able to speak our, the way I want to say that. But I say that to say this. Our city is 35% African-American. It's one of like 15 cities in America. That, that are like that. It should be a black business mecca. And we should be doing everything that we could do from our standpoint, I mean, I can't speak for everybody else. Whatever we do is seasoned, and white people hop on it. So, But if we did what we were supposed to do, and we got people like Shia Khan that's going to push the envelope, we wouldn't have to worry about First Baptist. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think that's really the, the main issue. I think, um, you know, before you came here, um, living here, growing up, there was something to do. 
we were packed out everywhere we went, whether it was kids, uh, teenagers, uh, high schoolers, college people, whatever. Jacksonville was a destination. It was something to do. I, the stadium used to be packed out, whether we was winning or losing. Uh, we had a full stadium. You know what I mean? Uh, even when Reigns and Reebok played, what I think the last time they played was what the same year that they revitalized the stadium in '95 when Trouble was here. Man, it was thick. You know what I mean? I mean, we had things going. It's just it's to, it's deteriorated. But like you said, it's the powers that be. But that's what I'm saying. Like the thing is, the powers that be, everybody caters to something. Right. And to me, most people cater to the green. And if we are doing it. If we're going out there, we're forcefully doing it, we have to, what happens is we replace, whenever there's a void, something has to replace that void. So again, we talk about the parking lots are empty. Like what I did for the, and this is how I figured out with a lot of the stuff. What I did when the, when, when the FSU was supposed to play Boise State here, first thing I did was buy out Lot J. I was going to have a big ass block party for that. Sell it at $40, $40 a ticket. I was going to make sure now, because of my reach, it will be white people and black people. But the biggest thing is I'm catering to, to, to whatever is African-American. But we got to support that kind of stuff. And if we could be the change, because it's two things. A problem can either be seen as a problem or can be seen as, a, as an opportunity to make money and, and, and create things. So, like, what we did have, we ended up vacating and flocking. That's why, I mean, again, like I said, the biggest thing is Shy's not wrong. There, it used to be something. But it's not there, and well, it's an opportunity. Let's start a board. People like us is the people that he's looking for. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's one thing about Shard. Shard is not afraid to go in the community and put money into it. Mm -hmm. So if you got the know-how, let's just start a board. That's it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It, it, it start like you know, like the guy said last week. That was here, I guess, last week. It start with us. So let's just start a board. If if that's the know-how, we start a board and we, we can. Bridge those gaps, bro. I'm with that. Yeah, that's the problem. I guess that's the thing. I ain't with the boys, cause that, cause that, cause what happens is, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I'm a, I'm a doer. Like, I, I, I do stuff. Like, I don't go to church. I don't go to a lot of those things because I see bureaucracy, nah, it, and I don't have time for that. And this is just my personal opinion. It's just like when I see an issue, I'm gonna be like, all right, cool. We're gonna, we gonna do it. It's like it's like minded, right? If you got like-minded people, then it's more than one person behind you that's gonna get, willing to get the job done. Right, you right, get more right, than right, one right, thing right. done, and objectives could be reached. And that's the and biggest now, thing. And now it's a bag behind you, which this guy sees. Mm -hmm. Now you can go do the things that you need to do. But like I said, it's like-minded people that's gonna go out and get the job done. Right. No, because like you were saying with the councilman here last week, Yes, of course, of course. Do your thing, man. This is Do your a thing. fun live talk show. Oh, you good? I just uh, yes. Excuse yeah. the Duval and James, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hush puppets. Do you have hush puppets? Uh, Aaron? We need some puppets. Hush puppets. Hush puppets. Do you have hush puppets? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Uh oh. But um. Uh oh. Like we were saying about the councilman, I've been in talks with him, and what we're going to be starting is a state of Duval, state of, like a state of the union, state of Duval. And we're going to ah, do that whoop, on whoop, his, um, on like the fifth Tuesday when we have five weeks in a month because he has city council meetings on Tuesday nights. So he can't come out like every night, like, you know, every Tuesday like James does. But um, he's going to come and do that and we're going to try to bring the community out so that we can have our voices heard and we can have a platform and he does want people to get behind him you saw that we got the exclusive last week that he's looking to run for mayor why not come alongside him and help bridge the gap and get our voices heard about the policies and the programs and the different things that we want to see so so you Keep got that in mind. So can I ask you guys? So you guys are saying that y'all don't have necessarily a problem with Shaw saying that, right? You don't feel like he came across a little aloof and away from I feel like the grassroots of the what situation. I've been saying for the because whole you time. know Personally, you know, we've tried to reach out we have. and we brought him a lot of these what like, I keep trying to get things Shaw that we're doing right now. And the city to understand what he needs to do is he has to grow some roots here. Right now, he doesn't have any roots. He needs to do some kind of academy, some kind of, um, what, what, what is it called? 
That's what it you is think. Frustration. Fifty years. Because I know he's working on trying to get a new stadium deal. Do did too. Fifty so years is older than all. I think it all just all bubbled out. He's calling it a curse, but that's what it is. Yeah, that's you know, oh, like oh, I'm gonna take it somewhere. It is a curse, and it does need to be broken. Lord, speak it in Jesus' name. I think he's. <laughs> I think he's looking at all the different things that he can bring here. Um, yes. The Super Bowl, which we got blessed with, but it was again. That was the worst. You got. But again, it was horrible because it was an opportunity that was that was missed on. You can't. The economic impact of a Super Bowl is essentially having what some cities having a fiscal year in a week. Like yeah. you can't turn that down. But the 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 amount of the lack of hotels, which yeah, it is still a lot of hotels, but compared to your Miami, your Tampa, your yeah. Orlando, is nowhere near. So when you don't have the hotels, you can't bring in conventions. There's a lot of money that gets made like in Orlando, Tampa, and Orlando just from sheer conventions. Having the draft, and you have this gorgeous area that he's actually built up and that he wants to build up, but if you don't have hotels within a five-mile radius of the stadium, you're literally missing out on something. And to be honest with you, when you look at Jacksonville in comparison to another city that got an NFL team is in Charlotte. It is, it is a stark contrast. Yeah. Charlotte outside of downtown looks a lot like Jacksonville. Yeah. Charlotte downtown looks like a major epicenter. Like a, like it's, a, it's a great place. It's, I forgot what it's called. You walk there, and it's like four stories, and there's hotels. I mean, there's restaurants there's, um, that turn into clubs. There's a CVS for when you need to go get some... Um, some prophylactics for after the club, or, or there's a liquor store. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do to where you can walk from your hotel to the stadium and to the nightlife. Right now, for me to go to a hotel, and I'm one of those young people who probably would go and hang out and do those things, but like I got to... I got to sit in 30 minutes of traffic to be able to get to one of these bridges yeah. or I got to pay Uber, the, the super high rates on the Uber. So I think a lot of his stuff is a lack of seeing the vision in 20 to 30 years of what it can be and seeing what it should be. And then just saying, hey, do these people even really want, want this? It. And if you don't want it, you just have to say that, say the truth. And it's a it's a waste. When you historically Disney was supposed to be in Jacksonville, yeah. but um. Who was the mayor there? Mayor Ball said he didn't want those carnies here, so it went to Orlando. See what happened. See yeah. see what Orlando looks we like. Missed out. This was supposed to be hot. This used to be Hollywood on the East Coast. Yeah. He didn't want that. They ran it up out of here. Downtown Florida Coastal was supposed to be there. They changed their mind. Didn't do it. Florida Coastal went to Bay Meadows. You saw that area get developed a little bit. Um, UNF was originally supposed to be downtown. Said they didn't want that. Now you look at where UNF went off to over to JTB. You see the growth of JTB with UNF over there. It's a it's a city consistent of making bad decisions because they don't want to grow. Yeah, they don't want to grow. And First Baptist now has said they're going to sell they're off most of their sell. stuff. But again, even with First Baptist, cool. The Pilgrims got a lot of power, but with a city that's thirty five percent African American. If 35% of the African Americans said, I want my downtown jumping, I'm yes. going to show you how I'm going to get my, I'm going to spend my money, I'm going to do this, I'm going to try not to shoot nobody this week, I'm going to do a whole <laughs> bunch of other shit, you will see that, again, your green dictates what people yes, do be, just as big as your votes. All right. Well, well. Yes, so, like I say, if he grows some, if he plants some roots here, you got to show people that you plan on staying here. You don't have one foot here and the other foot across the pond. You understand what I'm saying? I don't think he has one foot across the pond. I just believe that, like he said, okay, my highest selling, my highest attendance game was what, uh, 64,000? I think that was the last uh, Thursday night game when uh, Ramsey was yeah. still here. A lot of that has to do with a drop off. Ramsey's not here, and he put a lot of energy in his team when he came. Tickets did go up when he was drafted. Jersey sales went through the roof when he was drafted. A lot of that has a lot to do with it. A lot of people don't look at that factor. Um, another thing is what eighty, what eighty six, eighty seven thousand in London. Okay, well, like you said, a stark contrast. It's things that's there that's going to bring people there. Look at our downtown. Like, I just did 17 seconds of downtown Atlanta leaving. It looks beautiful. <laughs> rolling, just rolling. The just on the highway. It looks uh -huh. beautiful. We come down, down our downtown. Magic like, I'm going to go to the mall. <laughs> uh, 
uh, <laughs> all your dreams can come true. No, don't, don't bring up Magic City. That's a hole in the wall now. Right next to uh, uh, Greyhound. That ain't what you want to go to. I'm telling you right now. It's way more stuff that look better than that out there. Oh, yeah, that way. Where you from, dude? Who runs this?